Ted Talks with your host, Ted Wilson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Tad Talk with Tad Western. I am your host, Tad Western, and this is Tad Talk 40. It's uh, it's taken me a while to get number 40 out. Uh, yeah, I've had a lot of shit going on, but uh, like Tad always does, you know me, I'll do 15 podcasts, then I'll stop and go do whatever the hell I do and then come back because everybody's wanting it. Today is what, November 5th, I believe? Yeah, uh, it's election day tomorrow, so get out and vote, and uh, or don't. If you're uh, highly uneducated and uninformed, please do yourself a favor and don't vote, and don't have children. All right, so what are we, oh, we've had a lot going on uh, here at the ranch and uh, in my life and everywhere else. It's just been crazy. This is, uh, this can be the first podcast I think I'm going to throw out a video on YouTube with, so... If you're hearing this on iTunes or podcast, whatever podcast you listen to, there should be a YouTube video uh, going up. So I'm trying to uh, make videos and, you know, expand my horizons. I've been trying to do this forever. I've had a green screen, just never used it. Green screen doesn't work too well in uh, on podcasts. But yeah, I'm going to be uh, recording video now, people. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing Tad Talk every day or just once a day. Or not, obviously, I'm not going to do multiple a day, but probably, I don't know, at least three times a week. So yeah, if you uh, like Tad Talk, go ahead and like, subscribe on iTunes, share, and the YouTube channel. Be sure to uh, watch the YouTube channel and uh, subscribe, share it, like it. I'm going to try to build that up. Who knows how long it'll take before I get taken down for God knows what, saying something offensive. Not that Tad would ever say anything offensive, but yeah, i uh, I, this is actually, I just had to stop mid-recording because I had uh, two guys come to my door and try to sell me fiber, AT&T fiber optic internet, which 50 bucks a month didn't sound bad, but I don't know what what the fine details were. I, weren't, I wasn't able to uh, coax any of those details out. I'm sure it'll jump up to like 150 bucks a month after the first three or something. I don't know. Anyway, shout out to AT&T though for putting fiber in. Oh, shit. What do we have to talk about? I think the last time I talked, we were talking about uh, Brett Kavanaugh was still, you know, being accused of butt-raping chicks at parties in high school, and it was coming back to hurt him. And anyway, he got uh, he got confirmed to the uh, Supreme Court. So, yeah, hashtag believe all women. I think a lady just came out, too, that had accused him. It was I can't remember the story, but she was one of the... Uh, far one of the later accusers, and she just pretty much made the story up and admitted to it. So yeah, she's under like, I don't know, house investigation or something. I don't know why are you making shit up, lying. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, so I've got my notes here. I'm going through shit that's happened since the last time we've talked. Oh, Kona. He uh, last time the, I was recording Tad Talk 39. Kona was real quiet. He's normally whining at the door and everything, and he was really quiet, and I was like, oh, that's that's weird. Maybe he's just sleeping, taking a nap. No, turns out I get out of uh, the studio here, and what's Kona doing? He's completely torn apart my bathroom, uh, taken a toilet paper roll off the thing, shredded it completely, looked like it snowed. Look, I mean, in, inside my house, it was completely, it was complete bullshit. I mean, it looked like a fucking bomb went off at a Q-tip factory, and just... Charmin toilet paper and Kleenex fucking everywhere. I mean, he had torn the, my trash. He chewed up a full fucking roll of toilet paper. I mean, that dog, he's just, he's a turd. So, yeah, I've got video now, so I might be able to show pictures. I don't know if I got any pictures of that, but I'll just find a dog that tore up a bathroom, and I'll throw it up right here, wherever. I don't know. This is my first time doing this, so we'll figure it out. So then we... uh I was watching football on Sunday, and I uh, I had made a pizza in my oven, and I let it cool off. It was sitting on top of my burners, obviously, and I'm sitting there watching the game. I think I had had one slice, and then the other, the the rest of the pizza is just sitting there on top of the uh, oven. And I hear, I keep hearing this click, 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 click. I'm like, what the fuck is going on in my kitchen? And I was like, wait a minute. I was like. Someone trying to cook something in there. And I was like, wait a minute. No one else is here. So 
I go in and Kona has uh, completely got on top of the oven trying to get to this pizza and he's pushing the, uh, he's got his paw on the dial and just setting the clicker off and it's two inches away from a bunch of napkins that he had knocked over and spilt all over the place. So luckily my house didn't burn down. It, it, it was crazy. And the the whole kitchen smelled like gas because he was sitting there holding on to it for like 15 minutes. It wasn't 15 minutes. It was probably about uh, a minute or so. I don't know. I like to exaggerate. But I was like, holy shit, dog. You asshole. So yeah, he had lit the burners and about burnt my fucking pizza. So yeah, Kona's been a, uh, he's been a bad boy. Oh, what else do we have? I had, uh... Had my buddy Steve's birthday. We went out, what, one or two Saturdays ago. We went out to, uh, we all got together, did a little day drinking on Thurs or on Sunday. Saturday, Saturday, it was a Saturday. I don't know why I said Sunday. And we, uh, we had to get an Uber XL to, uh, we had a lunch at, uh, the Capitol Grill downtown. Nice, fancy place. And, uh, so we got to order an Uber XL to get six people in this van. Shows up, the guy looks exactly like Santa Claus, but there's a twist. His wife is riding shotgun with him in the front seat, and she's navigating off her phone. And so we paid for an XL, and we only had five seats, so we got like four people crammed in the back. These were the weirdest people ever. They didn't say anything. They didn't turn any music on. Anytime it, she'd come to a turn, she's like, all right, turn left here. All right, yeah, here. We're going here. And then we about, we about got in a wreck. Somebody, somebody crossed a lane at about... About took us out while we're in this van. It was the weirdest Uber ever. Oh my god! But we got to Capitol Grill. That place is awesome. Uh, we were trying to watch a uh, an Ohio State game. Trying to watch them lose to uh, I think they were playing Penn State. I can't remember who the hell they were playing. It was like two weeks ago. I should probably know this before I do a podcast. But you know me. I'm Tad Wester. I don't prepare for shit. So yeah, they uh, we tried to get them to turn this TV on in this room, and apparently it was. They didn't have any cords or anything to plug it in. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, well. So I ordered the uh, medium rare New York strip steak for lunch and comes out, comes out fucking well done, like burnt to a crisp. I'm like, holy shit. And it wasn't just mine. Uh, Another guy who was there, Chris, he, he had ordered a medium rare as well and his was even worse than mine was. So we were sitting there, so we were sitting there waiting for I don't know how long to get two more steaks done it turned out it, once they got it right it was an awesome fucking uh, steak but uh yeah it was kind of a uh, pain in the ass down there at the capitol grill awesome and expensive but they just uh fucked up the old tad western steak to begin with so we ended up going out after that we ended up going out to punch bowl social and uh bowling doing a little of the bowling down there at punch bowl and then i got my uh my white girl uh, white girl wasted picture photo shoot on on the uh, infamous red couch. I don't know if if anybody's from Indianapolis and they they see all the social media pictures of chicks on a red couch like posing and shit. That's that's from Punchbow Social. I'll throw it up. And uh, yeah, so I took a little couple pictures on there. It was a fun time. We ended up uh, taking bird scooters back to uh, back to the crib, and we were drunk as fuck at this point, and. Uh, I didn't have the app, so I I hopped on a uh, Chris on Chris's, and he trailed me for about three blocks. And I was like, "Fuck this! This is bullshit." So we ended up having to get an Uber. It was fucked up, but oh yeah, that was awesome. What else is going on in my life? Oh, Pooh Bear, she uh, she's the fifteen year old golden I've got. She uh, she about died a week or two ago. She uh, Thursday on a Thursday, I noticed she had a swelling under her neck and I was like oh that's not good so I was like ah if it I'll take her to the vet if it gets worse so it ended up Saturday it got larger probably about the size of a coke can or so maybe bigger and I was like holy shit I gotta take you to the doctor Pooh Bear so I took her to the vet and they get her in they're like yeah she's got some abscess they they did all the x-rays and everything to her and came back there was nothing she was super healthy except for this one abscess she's got in her throat and they're like well yeah here's your antibiotics and then they gave her some antihistamine shots because her skin's all fucked up and she scratched like no other because she had fleas so she had flea shots on the shit so then saturday she 
I woke up and she was a little bit worse. And I was like, well, maybe another day or so before these uh, antibiotics kick in and take the infection out. So then Sunday I woke up. Turns out she was, actually I think it was the same weekend. Uh, It was the same weekend as the, uh, so I got home after day drinking Saturday. And she was swelled up even more. And I'm like, God damn it. So I can't take her in on a Sunday. Sunday, she swelled up a little more, and then Monday, I got home from work, and she uh, she was swelled up super bad. It looked like she ate an entire hornet's nest of uh, of hornets. I don't know what else is in hornet's nest besides like paper mache, and I don't know if hornets make honey or not. I don't know, but yeah. So she she looked horrible. I'll throw the pictures up, and she <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I took her in there, and they're like, oh, my God, she's way fucking worse. I'm like, yeah, I told you she was worse because they called me during the day, and I was like, ah, I don't think she's getting any better. Well, has she been eating? I was like, yeah, she's been eating a little bit, but not a whole lot. So she gets in there. They're like, well, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to do, if she holds still, we're going to give her an incision. So they cut a, I don't know, inch and a half, two-inch cut on her throat, and the uh, the vet said that she they drained over a liter of pus and just nasty nasty stuff out of her uh, <laughs> out of her throat. And the guy the guy came in after doing it. He goes, "Oh my god!" He goes, "I wish I'd have recorded that." He goes, "That was the nastiest shit and that I've ever seen." He goes, "And it smelled like straight ass too." I was like, "Yeah, I can imagine." I was like, "I don't know why you guys didn't drain it Saturday when I was in here, but oh well." So yeah, Pooh Bear was. Uh, Pooh Bear was on death's door, but she's all better now. She's got her, she was taking, uh, I don't know, it was about silver dollar sized antibiotics after this, after that one, after that, after she got her incision and everything done. Sorry, I had a drink. So she, uh, yeah, she she had a giant hole in her, hole in her throat, and I had to keep, you know, paper towels on it because she's just oozing. She oozed for about a week and a half just nasty pus and shit out she finally just now got uh got all healed up so she's uh she's a trooper she turns uh 16 at the end of this month so yeah she's uh she's a good puppy dog uh living living life to the fullest she's uh she's out playing with conan and out doing all kinds of crazy stuff so enough about tad western what else is going on here let's talk about some news this is some news from a while ago that I had uh, that I had uh, re- queued up and ready to roll, but I just never podcast. So here we go. Uh, Indiana man pistol whipped over Bruno Mars song. Police say <laughs> this is in Greenwood. A Shelbyville man said he was pistol whipped Friday over an argument about a Bruno Mars song. The victim told police he and another friend went to visit their friend of 50 years. They've been fi- friends for 50 years, but God damn it, they're not going to let one Bruno Mars song get in the way. So, uh, yeah, they went and visited him about 5 o'clock p.m. The victim said the three were talking and started arguing over a certain s- whether or not a certain song was sung by Bruno Mars. I used to get into these arguments all the time with uh, the world-famous Mike Hashem. We, uh, we would always get into arguments like this, and... Turns out he was mostly mostly wrong all the time. I do believe he argued that uh, on that uh, Little Wayne. I can't remember what Little Wayne song it was, but he he didn't sing the chorus on it. And I was like, yeah, he did. It's just highly auto tuned, and he's like, so we ended up getting in a fight over it. But whatever, I didn't pistol with him. Yeah, the victim said it was accused. The victim said it was, but the accused said it wasn't sung by Bruno Mars. Police, the police report doesn't say what song the two friends were arguing about. I hope it was treasures. That is what you are. So the fight continued to escalate until the victim showed his friend that the song was by Bruno Mars, at which point the victim said his friend pulled out a gun, pointed at him. The victim said he called the accuser a chicken shit, and then (laughs) the accused swung a gun at him, striking him in the face. The victim told the police the gun went off when it hit him. Oh shit! He must have he had his hand on the trigger when he fucking hit him. That sucks. He's lucky to get killed. That'd be the worst thing to die over, Bruno Mars song. Jesus Christ. Uh, 
He said the uh, he, he said he then took a swing at the man and the gun went off again. So it went off twice. The victim and the friend brought uh, went home back home to Shelbyville. So the police report was filed hours later uh, after the victim called nine one one. He was shocked at the time and uh, got cleaned up and showered before making a report. Oh my god. The accused admitted to hitting the victim in the face with a thirty eight revolver, so yeah, nice. And uh, according to the report, he was arrested on suspicion of battery and injury and criminal recklessness with a deadly weapon. He's lucky he didn't get shot. Oh, I'm trying to think what other Bruno Mars songs we got. That sucked. Oh, here we go. Here's another good story. This is out of Florida. Man threw other man face first off bridge in Dotona Beach. A Dotona Beach police officer arrested a man Sunday after spotting him throwing another man face first off the main street bridge and 30 feet into the water. You want to go feet first if you're going off a bridge because you never know how deep the water is. Derek Goodwin, 21, was charged with aggravated battery causing bodily harm and disorderly conduct, according to an arrest report. He's being held without bond. Goodwin denied he tossed the man off uh, off the bridge. He jumped off the bridge, Goodwin told the police. See, he tried using what I told the cop when I Josh Scobie the plant, the potted plant in college. It didn't work out too well for this guy because he caught him on video. The Daytona Beach police officer told a different story, and his body cam video appeared to show him pushing the man off the bridge. All right. I watch you. I'm right here, he said. Uh, apparently, she was pushing her, the woman was pushing her bicycle because it had a flat tire, and that's when Goodwin walked up and started arguing, uh, with, with him over, uh, money and struck the female. Damn, this guy's beating the shit out of everybody, Grand Theft Auto style. Oh, the dude intervened, and Goodwin struck him, then threw his bicycle off the bridge. <laughs> so this guy threatened this guy's chick that they're riding bikes with and then he throws a bicycle off the fucking bridge that's awesome so then he threw the guy off the bridge face first what the shit's going on come on at the time the uh, police officer got out of his car and saw him toss saw goodwin toss mascaro off the bridge the officer drew his gun and ordered goodwin to the ground before being handcuffed goodwin uh, reached into his pocket and threw what an officer perceived to be a wallet into the water so he i wonder if he stole the wallet or if he had drugs on him he, i assume he probably had drugs on him. that's why he threw it in the water so they arrest him yeah uh the area beneath the bridge has a number of pylons and catwalks which could have re resulted in severe injuries or death but uh mascaro swam to a py pylon and clung to it until someone in a rowboat came up and picked him up he uh, he only suffered a small cut under his right eye, and a uh, bloody and a bruised eye. So uh, yeah, I guess that's the best it can best they can get. Uh, getting thrown off a bridge, not bad. This is out of uh, this next story is out of the uh, UK or somewhere. Uh, par headline: Pair convicted of beating man for trying to steal a Kinder egg containing heroin shoved in her vagina. So Kinder eggs are like these little chocolate-covered eggs with surprise plastic things inside that are hold treats and stuff. So I assume she had the plastic thing full of drugs stuffed up her cooch. But in the U.S., I don't think they can sell them because it's like a choking hazard and can't have plastic-covered... Oh, I got an update. Nice! Uh, plastic in your food or something? I don't know. Anyway, two drug addicts, winners, have been jailed for beating the living fuck out of a man... I added that. In revenge attack after he tried to steal a Kinder Surprise egg from the vagina of one of those jailed. Oh, man. 38-year-old Jodine Harvey and 40-year-old Stephen Brown imprisoned Vincent Rudder for 36 hours in his own flat. I like the word flat. While they subjected him to terrifying... Terrifying and violent ordeal that left him with 17 fractured ribs, a punctured lung, and a lacerated spleen. Damn, cut his spleen up. 
56-year-old Mr. Rudder had been taking heroin for 24 hours with the pair at the property in Cornwell last December. Eventually, they all fell asleep, but Harvey woke up to find Mr. Rudder, who was desperately trying to get another fix, attempting to ex- extract a Kinder Surprise egg containing a load of heroin from her cooch. God, there's nothing like keeping heroin in your coochie. Oh, man, pussy will get you high. What followed was a beating during which he was severely punched and kicked before the pair seemingly put aside their differences and continued to take the other drugs. Eventually, it became clear how injured Rudder was. Stephen Brown pled guilty to causing uh, bodily harm with intent, and he's sentenced to three years in prison. Harvey pled guilty to uh, bodily harm and was sentenced to 16 months. She must have been the chick. Chicks always get less time. My fucking male privilege, my ass. However, because of that time Harvey spent on Richard uh she got released or something. I don't know. So, yeah. During those days, you took an extraordinary amount of drugs, and it seemed that uh, your addiction... Yeah, this is all fucked up. There's mug shots of these people. I'm going to throw them up. So they just beat the shit out of this guy because he wants more drugs. Come on. You got to you gotta let your guys get high. All right, so I don't... There's not a happy ending, really, except for that man's spleen was severed. That was kind of funny. Oh, here we go. Staying across the pond, an English bulldog has been in, euthanized after biting off his Scottish owner's testicles, in which had been coated in peanut butter. So this guy's dipped his nutsack in some peanut butter, and then did he let his dog try to lick it? Or <laughs> This is fucking hilarious. A 22-year-old man, I consider this man a child, who has not been named, it's probably a good thing, was found fully clothed and lying in a pool of blood in his Haddington East Lothian apartment. He was rushed to the hospital where... He was put in induced decodum for several days. God damn. Can you imagine waking up with your nuts gone? And then not only your nuts gone, but your dog's been put down? That'd be the worst day ever. He returned to consciousness and cooperated with police. Authorities say that no one else had been in the apartment at the time of the attack. The dog named Biggie. <laughs> after the gangster rapper Biggie Smalls. Call him Biggie Balls after this. Was found covered in his owner's blood. Inquiries are continuing to establish how a 22-year-old man, man sustained significant injury to his groin, Scottish police say. However, as part of the investigation, the owner of the dog, which is believed to have be, been involved, has voluntarily signed documentation consent to the destruction of the animal. They're going to destroy the animal. Why, why can't they just say they're going to put it down? I guess they got to cremate it afterwards or something? I would want them... First of all, I'd want him to cut that damn dog open like they do sharks and see if there's see what else is, is inside this dog's stomach beside my nuts. I guarantee you there's at least TV, two TV remotes inside this dog's stomach. Biggie, he was such a nice dog. He isn't aggressive or anything. He is quite small and fine with other dogs. The dog is an absolute angel, and I was happy to be around him. He gets a bit freaked out over noise, but he loves having his belly rubbed. Yeah, you know what else he likes? He loves when his owner puts peanut butter on his balls and lets him bite him off. Extra cr- extra nutty peanut butter. It's not like Jif fine spread. It's the, uh, the chunky peanut butter. Extra chunky peanut butter. Now with man nuts. The neighbors report hearing the bulldog barking around 4 a.m. and again at 8 a.m. on October 7th, the day of the incident. A loud party was reported, reportedly heard coming from the address. However, no one, no one else is believed to be involved in the incident. What a dumbass! All right, in other uh, dumbass news, Breeders' Cup man arrested for drunkenly riding horse. I, I, I don't know a lot of people who ride horses sober. To be honest with you, all cowboys have flasks, right? Flasks of whiskey. All right, a man who has been arrested for getting on a horse while drunk and nearly making it. To the track of the Breeders' Cup meet in Kentucky. Oh my god. Michael Wells Roddy, 24. I like this guy. Sneaked into a restricted area, grabbed a horse, and was in the track entrance before being stopped. Now, was this guy dressed up like a jockey? 
Was he three foot tall? I've got so many questions. How is there's no way this is a full size man and he was uh, mistaken for a jockey? It was added that he was under the influence of alcoholic beverages, so that means he was taking shots, drinking beer, who knows, maybe doing whippets, and was loud and disorderly when asked to dismount. The six million dollar Breeders' Cup Classic was won by Accelerate at Churchill Downs. The Breeders' Cup is one of the biggest meet- meetings on the American racing calendar. According to the report in Lexington, Wells Roddy has been charged with alcohol intoxication in a public place and disorderly conduct and is going to appear in court. Mind- so there's nothing else to this story? He didn't, like, take off? This is, that's not even a story. Why did I even read that? Tad, you should probably proofread these fucking things before you, uh, before you read them. All right, so what else we got going on? We've got... Oh, tomorrow's election day. Like I said, go out and vote if you're informed. If you're not informed, don't vote. So yeah, I think I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have the video up. Be sure to uh, like, subscribe, share on iTunes if you like. If you don't like, don't like it then. Don't listen. I don't understand why you'd be listening this far in. But yeah, I'm going to try to do about, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes a day or every episode for Tad Talk. Uh, I don't know. What else do I got going on coming up? Well, I don't know. I'm going to make this video, see how well it turns out, and then after that, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably going to be terrible because it's the first one, so thanks for sticking with me, my fans, my Tadics. You'll get your daily dose of Tatterall. All All right, until then, remember, keep them holstered unless you're ready for a shootout. Pew, 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 pew.